Hi guys, I'm Christina. Uh, this is my 2020 Capri camper named Althea. I've been traveling in her for about seven months now and y'all can come inside and check her out. So now we are inside the camper and this is my living room space. I have a table here that also can fold down and this also becomes a bed once you put this on. I do have a couple blackout curtains here uh, that snap right back up here. I bought some extra fabric from the store just to make it a little homier in here with the plants and all. I do have a 32 inch TV in here as well with a Blu-ray player and a stereo system. Um, I added a couple extra shelving, mainly for books and stuff. I have a couple on the bedside as well. And then there's two storage spaces up here. This is normally where I keep my clothes. Um, the storage in here is pretty small, so I added these little honeycomb sections for my clothing. So I keep most of my shirts up here and then pants on the other side. Um, so for water storage, I have a 30 gallon water tank and then a four gallon tank for the um, water heater. And then I have two 200 amp batteries that charge off of the truck. I really never run out of power driving around pretty much. If I drive for an hour, it charges it probably up to 60, 50, 60%. 60 so it's not very bad at all. Um, the lowest it'll ever get is about 30, um, which I could still use the stereo system and all the lights with a 30% uh, batteries charge. Uh, I don't hang out in here too, too much. Um, I normally use this space for bad weather days when I'm on the road. If I plug in somewhere, I do have a generator that I'll plug into or if I go to a campsite. Um, so the TV has to be plugged into shore power to use on the road. So I can't just use that off the battery. Um, but other than that, this space is kind of for like a little breakfast area to write. And that's about it for the most part. Something I would do different about this space is there's not a lot of storage in this camper. Um, the nice part is in the back of the truck, I do have um, a four door truck, so I do have storage back there. Uh, so if I could use some more storage, if there was more places to put um, cabinets or something underneath the seats, that's probably what I would change differently. So this is now the bedroom part of it. It is a queen size uh, mattress that does fit up here. And I have two windows here, one to the front and then one to the foot of the bed, as well as I added another bookshelf up here also. Um, I did have the option when building it to put a large front window in and I decided against it mainly staying in it full time in the winter. Uh, it would get very chilly in here if I were to put a big window in the front. Um, coming with the four small windows in the camper, it does allow for a nice breeze when all the windows are open, but it does keep it a little bit warmer in the winter time, which is what I definitely was looking for. But in the summer, it does allow for a nice breeze, so I really don't need to have the air conditioner on full time. So that definitely helps a lot. So inside the camper, I have six 110 volt um, outlets, as well as four of the 12 volt um, USB ports. Um, these, uh, to use these, I do have to be plugged into shore power for those or a generator, anything like that. Um, so they're super convenient to have. I also have two on the outside as well as the 30 amp plug is on the outside as well. Um, my favorite part about it is the size of it, that I have plenty of space to like sprawl out and I can read in here, turn around, like it's not very tight. Um, the only thing I would change about it is it is very, I shove myself in the little corners all the time, so it does get tight in here. Uh, sometimes it's nothing too crazy. Uh, overall, it's probably one of like my favorite spots in the camper because I can watch TV from here. Um, if people are hanging out, we could easily talk to one another. Uh, so it's definitely like the comfy spot in the camper. Growing up, I was always raised to have that like normal lifestyle people always talk of, of going to college, getting a job, getting a family, settling down, and that never sat right with me. Um, I got into restaurant management when I was 18 years old, 
and noticed that I was working 120 hours a week and that just wasn't the life that I wanted to live anymore and started looking into van life, decided if I wanted to build out a van, if I like wanted to pull behind camper, which way I kind of wanted to go. And along the way, I found a couple people that had the truck campers and I definitely loved that it was super convenient that it just sat inside the bed of the truck. I could take it anywhere with me. It is four wheel drive, so I'm not really restricted in where I go and anything like that. So to be able to just take it everywhere with me has been amazing. Traveling as a solo female, uh, that's such a question I get all the time. Uh, do I feel safe? Um, how do I feel? I've always felt safe where I was. If there was somewhere that I was uncomfortable with, I just kept moving along. Um, traveling by myself, my parents were very shocked that this was the decision that I wanted to do. They've been super supportive of it along the way. My entire family and friends have been awesome about this entire experience. So I've loved it so far. So on this side, we have the kitchen. I have a Nova Cool refrigerator with a small freezer on the inside. Uh, this does not pull too much power from the battery, which is nice. And because of its size, I normally keep it fully stocked when I'm full time on the road so I can turn it down a little bit so it uses even less power as well. And I also have one more storage space up here. I do have a microwave put in. Um, the microwave does need to be plugged into shore power to use. Uh, so if I'm at a campground or plugged into the generator, this is fully active. I added a two burner stove to it, um, as well as a flush mount sink uh, with the chrome and they both have uh, glass lids to them. So it gives me a little bit more counter space when I'm not using them actively. Um, I have a little hammock here that normally has fruit in it and all that kind of stuff for me on the road. Um, I have another cabinet space up here. This is kind of just pots, pans, cups, all that kind of stuff that gets tossed around when you're driving. Um, keeps it nice and tight in there. Um, I do have a water heater. The water heater goes off of the propane tank. So um, you just flip a switch. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to heat up the water for a nice shower. And the water pump, if you just flip a switch, the water start running and it pulls it straight to the sink then. Um, I did add the stereo system inside. So I have two speakers above uh, that play as well as two exterior speakers that can hook up to your phone, can hook up to the TV, to the radio all of that kind of stuff. Also, I have the air conditioner and the heater in here. Uh, that also needs to be on shore power when you use it. I never really use that too much. There's never a real need for it that I've met yet on it. Um, but I do have this heater here that has been my savior in the winter months. Uh, it is a very big heater for this size of camper. So if I keep it on low and have the windows open and then the fan on, that's normally the best way to go about it or else it gets very, very hot in here. Um, I have one more uh, storage container in here and it's the biggest one I have. So this is my little beer wall I have going on in here. I love breweries. So every brewery I go to on the road, I make sure I pick up a sticker from them and then just add them to the wall. So as far as my collection will go, uh, the longer I'm on the road, the more stickers I'll have on my wall. <laughs> uh, I did put the interior shower in here with a full nozzle, um, hot and cold water as well. I do have a fantastic fan put in that just cranks up and has different dials for speeds to use. I have a Dometic um, toilet put in here, the portable toilet, just a little things to keep shampoo, conditioner, body wash. Um, my, this is kind of my storage space when I'm actually driving. So anything I have laying out on the seats, backpacks, anything like that, trash cans will stay in here. So it doesn't roll around the camper when I'm driving. I don't use the shower as often. Um, the shower it's every now and then for quick things. If I'm sweaty after a hike and stuff like that. I try to go other places, friends, family, um, gyms, all of that to get like a real nice shower in after a while. Uh, the portable toilet though I do use daily. Uh, it's very convenient, easy to use, and it can be dumped at any rest stop, campground, anything like that. transition to living in the camper was interesting. Uh, I came from an apartment 
So a lot of my stuff I gave up when I moved in here. I had to pick and choose what clothes I wanted, um, cut down on the size of everything I had. I tried to go very environmentally friendly with the things I bought when I was in here, um, trying not to use plastics, anything like that when I was deciding what I wanted to have in here. Um, so that was probably one of the most interesting parts. There being little storage in here, definitely had to pick and choose what kind of clothing I wanted, which was necessary for me on the road versus what I would wear on a normal life if I was living in the apartment. Um, on the road for work to make money, I will pick a place that I like the most, find a restaurant, and I'll normally serve tables to just make some quick cash along the way. It's definitely been a sustainable way of living. Uh, serving tables, I can make up to $100 to $200 a day on a busy night if I pick the right kind of restaurant to go to. So it's definitely been paying the bills and getting it good along the way. So now for the outside of the camper, I did have two um, exterior speakers put in um, with the stereo system that's in there. If you flip that switch, it'll start to play on the outside, as well as there is a little back porch light for camping nights, so you could see a little bit better. It does get pretty bright and shines a good area right out here. I do have more 110 volt outlets in here, two more of them, as well as this is a solar hookup. So down where the batteries are, I already have solar installed. So I have a Jackery generator with the solar panels that can hook right up to the camper. So that's nice for sunny days. Uh, then I also have this 30 amp plug that I plug in here. Um, you can put uh, the extension cord for campgrounds, um, or if I'm just anywhere that has an outlet, if the power is running low, I could just plug right in and then we're good to go. So on this side of the truck, we do have the propane tank that sits on the inside here and just gets strapped in and replaced to hooks up uh, just like any other normal propane tank would. Um, I've never had a problem. Like I said, I don't really, it takes about a month or two before I run out depending on the season. So this kind of all just stays in here. And then I have my potable water. Uh, you just hook the hose up to here, whether it's at a campground or anywhere that has good drinking water, you just hook that up. It fills up the 30 gallon water tank directly from here. Um, and I also do have a little antenna here for the radio that is in the stereo system. Uh, yeah, so the camper itself is bolted into the bed of the truck. So there's little trap doors on the inside that the bolts hook up to, and it's right um, underneath here on the inside. So to get it actually off the truck, you would add the four jacks on all the sides of the truck, then uh, go inside, unlatch those bolts, pull out the gray water hoses, and then lift the truck or lift the camper up, pull the truck out, and then you're good to go. So I chose the Chevy Silverado. It's a 2011. Um, I chose this truck because I knew the hauling power on it was great. The battery in it's awesome. The mileage was pretty low when I got it. It had about 100,000 miles on it. So a truck like this can probably go for 250, 300,000 miles before I have to worry about anything going wrong. Uh, I've had the truck for about a year now. So it's been running great. The only thing I've had it replaced since then was the battery, which was old when I bought it. So that was minor uh, in comparison. Um, other than that, it does have a whole back seat, so I'll keep the jacks in the back when I'm driving uh, just to keep some extra room into the camper, as well as if there's any other storage that I need, it all goes into the back seat. When I did put the camper on, the gas mileage definitely did drop a lot. I'm getting about eight to nine miles a gallon now, so that did hurt a little bit when I started. Also, with this big gap that's above the truck to the camper, when it is windy, you definitely feel a little pickup on this side, as well as the crosswinds. Definitely feel that when you are driving through some windy weather. Uh, the truck feels like it shifts a little bit. It's never too extreme. My biggest concern when I bought it, um, when I asked the dealer about it was, can you go any miles per hour when you're driving and do you need to worry about the winds? And he said, no, uh, this kind's bolted into the truck. Um, others are bolted towards the outside and the outside ones do tend to shift a little bit more. Uh, I've had no problems with this shifting that it's bolted into the truck. Yeah, so I do have an Instagram. My Instagram is Chrissy Green and then two underscores if y'all want to follow me. Uh, I post pictures along the way, pictures of the camper and kind of my journey along the tiny home life. Thank y'all for watching and enjoying the tour of Althea. Um, that's it.
that's about all I got. <laughs> Thanks.